everybody. How's it all going? How's everybody doing today? Let's take a look here, shall we? Shall we? Shall we get this all good and going and started? Just go ahead and get that. Ah, oh, that's nice. Yeah. Changing up my... God, I changed up a lot of things today. I wanted to do this stream a little bit differently. I still wanted it to be kind of like a vlog, like my lounge streams are. But I uh, thought it would be kind of nice for a, a little bit of a change in some different things, you know? Have a, uh, a nice comic book camera here and a nice little face camera over here. And maybe a little bit of some nice royalty-free lo-fi music to just keep our chill going. So, let's see. Who do we have all in here today? Let's take a look, shall we? Hold on a second. Oh, and you'll also notice that I have a price guide up on the side over here so that if we need to, we can check some price ranges and things. You'll notice V for Vendetta is up there simply because that was just a... That was just a test run to make sure that the website did what I wanted it to do. And sure enough, it did, and I just went ahead and left it up there. Um, the camera might be a little a little funky for you guys. Let me see if I can kind of kind of make it a little, little less funky, huh? All right. Hopefully that'll work pretty all right. It's kind of at an awkward angle, you know, because um, it's not my primary camera. So I kind of had to change things a wee bit. But... Looks like Wrath of Wood's in here coming in and hanging out. That's cool, man. Glad to have you in here, Wrath of Wood. Said, gosh, today went by really uh, went by really slow. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, buddy. Um, but now we're just gonna we're just gonna hang out and chill for a little bit. So obviously, um, I kind of like looked over my boxes, and it looks like I've got about approximately I think about twelve or thirteen boxes now. When I talk about boxes, let me kind of show you guys what I'm working with. Almost all the boxes are going to be looking like this. Um, it's huge. <laughs> I don't know if you can really uh, tell the scale. Here, let me put it under the comic book camera so you guys can get a better idea. Yeah, there's no way you guys can tell how big this box is. Um, it's pretty large. Uh, I'm trying to kind of, you know, there's the, the end of it. It's about the size of the comic books, and it's about... Uh, yay big and I have about um, I think I said about like I think like 12 or 13 of these um, so I did at one point actually organize these boxes um, a wee bit a wee bit I went through them this was years ago mind you and I've been through these boxes a few different times and um, I did actually end up organizing the boxes based on at the time that I organized them, which was probably about eh, maybe like four or five years ago, I want to say. Um, I organized the boxes based on like some boxes just kind of have comic books that I'm unsure about. Some of them have comic books that I'm personally interested in. And then there's some of the boxes that just have comic books that are rare and or valuable. So this box that I have here, I only brought one out because I don't even know if we're going to be able to get all the way through this one singular box. Um, I doubt we'll actually be able to get through the whole thing in two hours, but we'll see. Um, this box that I have here should be, if I remember correctly, now mind you, this is like four or five years ago. This first box that I have here that I kind of, let me show it one more time on camera just a little bit. So this box... Um, should be the rare and valuable comic books, the majority of the extremely rare and extremely valuable comic books. So taking off the lid, the lid's off and, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna go through this. We're gonna, we're gonna take a look. Um, I am gonna look these up. As you guys can see, I have the, the go collect here that we can use to kind of figure out what the hell we're looking at. Um, so I'm just gonna pull... Whatever the hell here is in front. Now, mind you, I'm not immediately seeing anything that kind of stands out to me right away. I'm just kind of like quickly, very quickly flipping through a few of them. So, you know, I thought this box was all the valuable and rare ones, but now I'm thinking maybe not so much. Um, which kind of surprises me a little bit because I thought for sure it was, but... 
Like I said, this is something that I haven't looked at for four or five years, so I don't really know. So let me just kind of grab like a small pile here. Oh! Oh, it, uh, okay. So, yeah, I guess these are kind of the sort of rare and valuable ones, I think. I think the ones that are the most valuable are in the back, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Okay, so I'm going to pull out um, the stack that is supposedly, I think, the, probably the priciest. Um, and the only reason I know this is because I put sticky notes on the outside of the covers to kind of remind myself um, what it is that we're looking at here. So kind of get that into a, a decent angle that we can look at. So as you can see, I kind of have some, some, uh, some uh, what is it, uh, sticky notes on here. Um, and these are all the ones that I think were individually priced out to be the rarest or the most expensive or hard to find. Um, <laughs> Ratherwood says he likes big boxes and he cannot lie. I know, my friend. I know exactly what you mean. I'm quite a fan myself. Like me some boxes. Um, so I think that this pile should be the most valuable collection, I think. And they're all kind of, yeah, they're all kind of, um, individually sticky noted because they're the most well off, I believe. Now, if I remember correctly how I organized this, what I did was the number is, uh, supposed to be, hold on a second. That's very not cool. There we go. Okay. So... I believe that the number with the hashtag, or I should say the ampersand, oh wait, that's not an ampersand, that's a pound sign, sorry. Uh, that should be the issue number, and then the 40 with the line under it should be the price tag that I believe that I had put on the comic book based on looking them up at one point. Um, so, but the thing is, is that I don't know if those price tags have stuck as they are. So this one was originally priced out at like $40, okay? So I don't really know if that's the case. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look and see what we get here. So now I believe that uh, I haven't really properly used this search engine before yet. So I used it to like look up like one thing. Um, let's see. I think it should be categorized as brave and bold rather than Batman. So let's let's try that. We're gonna we're gonna try. Um, that's not how you spell the word the. For some reason, I believe that the word the needs to have a W in it. The brave and bold number ninety five. Let's see what we got going on here. Um. There it is. Sure enough, Brave and Bold, number 95. Um, so that actually worked out pretty good there. Um, hmm. I'm not really seeing any actual price tags on it, which is weird because, like I said before, uh, I used some kind of database in the past to keep track of how much they were selling for. And the last time I looked it up, it said it was like about $40, but I'm not really, really seeing much here. Hold on a second. Sale history. I guess that would probably be the right answer, wouldn't it? Oh, wow. Thanks. You're not going to let me know unless I have an account. You suck. You suck, okay? All right. Let's, uh, what is this here? Universal. I don't know what that means. Wow, they don't have any kind of... <laughs> Why? Oh, wait. Is this... Ri no. No, it's... That can't be right, can it? No. Hold on a second. Let me take a look here. Oh, wow. So they're like... There's like some people selling it between 75 and $105. And it looks like... Where the hell am I? eBay? That's kind of, I mean, theirs is probably like all graded and, and fancy-ish in like a plastic covering. And I'm sure there would be people who would scoff at what I've got and be like, bro, you don't even put them in like a graded plastic case? Bro, what are you even doing? All right. Well, I mean, it's still good to know. I mean, I probably, wow. Whew. Oh, boy. Um, wow. Wow. I, the thing is, though, is I never trust, like, when people say this is listed at 105, and it's like, 
Yeah, it's listed at 105, but how much does it sell for? <laughs> Just because it's listed at $105 doesn't mean people are going out and buying it at $105. Um, <laughs> and mind you, like I said, this 40, like when I last checked it, that was like four or five years ago, I think. Um, so it's probably gone up in price. I wouldn't be surprised, especially considering that people are, I don't know. We're kind of like in this era of where everybody and their mother-in-law is like trying to collect every single thing. I was so annoyed today, guys. I saw somebody doing a stream uh for digimon cards and being like yo bro look at this money look at this straight collector's money and i'm like jesus christ like is no hobby safe from being like monetized like digimon cards bro i that's why like a while ago i was telling my catcher that uh he needs to start investing in uh austin powers cards and watch like give it like give it like five five to ten years and people are, are going to be collecting Austin Powers cards and they're like, bro, do you even bro did you even invest in the Austin Power card market, bro? What are you even doing? <laughs> hey Rebecca, nice to see you too, Maz. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Rebecca says should be interesting to see what they are worth now. Definitely, yeah. Well, that's why I'm kind of doing this. I mean, obviously. The first one I looked at has definitely um, jumped in price since the last time I saw it. I mean, it was listed at 40 Honestly, all of these could probably be taken care of much better than how they are right now. They're not exactly... Oh, and I guess I might as well spoil the next one because I guess we're kind of done. Um, my eventual goal is to... Like, I mean, I am kind of like trying to look at some of the prices just out of curiosity... Um, but I am actually hunting down for something specific. There's a very specific comic book that I know is in my collection somewhere, and I'm not sure where I placed it. Um, it's possible that we might get to it, but I'm not totally sure if it's in this box or not. Um, but what I really want to do is I want to find it down. I want to set it aside. And my idea is to make like a video about it. Um, not necessarily based on the, you know, like collector's value or whatever, but to actually kind of talk about like the history of the comic book. Cause there's one in particular that I really wanted to kind of, um, talk about and, and go more over. Um, I probably need to like find a way to get some of these graded or better taken care of or something like that. That'd probably be a pretty, pretty good idea. You know what I mean? But, um, Let's see here. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking at something else off to the side. So we've got this Superman comic here. Um, this is just The Amazing Adventures of Superman. Uh, it's number issue number 244. And it's labeled here as $60 original price. Maybe I need to get like a notebook or something to like write these things down in, you know? Might be good to keep track of a little bit better. The problem is, though, here's the problem I have, guys. And, and like, this goes for, like, uh, cards as well. Like, I have some, like, old magic cards that are probably valuable. I don't know how to go about the grading process. And, like, I've never been the kind of person who would want to go and, like, risk putting my valuable cards or let alone comic books in the mail for the, pro for the purpose of having them graded and framed and stuff like that. So, I mean, I don't really know anything about that. And then on top of that, um, like, like the thing is too, is that like, if these comic books, like look at this stack, you guys. So, you know, the first one we looked at is being price ranged between 75 and a hundred dollars. Right. And so like people would probably say, oh, well that's clearly one you have graded, but like these, what you guys saw is the first one in this pile is the lowest priced one. So that means that as we get deeper into the stack, they're going to get more and more pricey. And the problem that I have with that, which don't get me wrong, like, oh no, like collectible comic books that are worth a fortune, whatever will I do? That's cool and all. But the problem that I have is that if every single comic book in this stack ascends into a higher and higher price, it gets to the point of where I have to get every single one of these graded and framed. And, like, that on its own, I, I, I ain't got money for that shit. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't. I don't have money for that. 
So, like, I don't really know how to go about this. And I'm sure that there are plenty of, you know, comic book collectors who would, you know, kind of look at what I'm doing here and being like, Oh my god, you're such a pleb! What are you doing? What are you doing? You're ruining them! Why? And it's like, I don't, like, I'm, I'm not some, like, high-class, like, you know, cigar-smoking, you know, freaking comic book collector here, you know? Like, I ain't got no top hat or nothing. Like, I'm just a person who was lucky enough to have a father who was obsessed with comic book collecting, and he took really good care of his comic books, and now I have to kind of, like, deal with that and figure out how I'm going to take care of these further on and, and what I'm going to do, and I mean, I ain't, got, I ain't got money or time for that shit, and I want to, like, take better care of them, but I just don't have the, I don't have the, um, you know, like, the resources I need to be able to properly take care of these, and I really wish I could, but, um, I just, I mean, I gotta get myself better situated first, and then maybe after I can get myself a little bit better situated, then I can have the ability to properly, you know, take care of these and things like that, and make it so that, you know, people won't, you know, be tearing their hair out in frustration of how I'm taking care of these comic books, but, um, I think I should probably, should I grab a notepad? Hold on, guys. I'm going to grab a notepad real quick so I can start writing some of these down. Give me a second here, guys. Uh, I have a notepad, like, right here. This should be fine. I don't even know if I'll be able to, like, utilize this notepad. Well, I mean, why, uh, you know, it's fine. I'll just have it off to the side. I won't worry too much about it, you guys. Um... And I mean, if you think about it, this video, like this, this stream that we're looking at right now, um, you know, this is a good, like, you know, recording of me cataloging all these bastards anyways. So, I mean, why would I really need to write it down? Right. I mean, I can look into it later, I guess, if I really wanted to, um, let me kind of catch up a little bit. eBay has past sales info, get them skull gray <laughs> Like, I just think it's kind of ridiculous, like, how, like, we're kind of, like, in this collector's boom, I feel like, and, um, uh, I think it's getting out of hand, you know, like, I think it's getting to a point of where, like, the items that people are starting to go out of their way to kind of, like, find value in is just, like, there's no real value in it. You know, and it's going to get to a point of where people are eventually going to realize that, like, there's no money. Like, Digimon cards? Guys. Digimon cards. For real? For real, though. Like, come on. <laughs> like, come on, man. All right, let me actually look into this comic book here. Um, do I have to write out the full name? I don't know if you guys can, can see the... The whole thing here let me kind of bring it down so you guys could see it a little bit better um yeah there you go okay so originally this guy was labeled at like 60 bucks i guess so we're gonna go ahead and i'll just type out the full name and see what happens just because like i know that there's lots of different versions of like you know the same characters over and over again um, number 244? Okay. Interesting. Uh, I didn't find anything. Okay. What if I... Hey. Hey! Shut up. Don't you do that. Don't you do that to me. Damn ads. Yeah, I'm I'm streaming this music. <laughs> so I get advertisements. I'm sorry, guys. I wish I didn't have to deal with that, but that's just how it's going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that and see if we... Oh, there it is. Okay, so I guess I didn't have to type out the full title. All I had to do was just type in Superman number 244. Okay. So let's see what we got going on here. Um, God, look at this, like, Spike, I don't even know what this... I don't know what any of this shit means, to be honest. I, I wish I was more into... Uh, this is a weird range of prices here. Very weird. Okay, so... 
It looks like it goes as low as $40 and as high as $340. So I don't really I don't really understand that. Um let's take a look here. Well, that's not what I'm looking at. What the hell? That's very weird. That's very very weird. I don't think Oh wait, that is it. But it's got a different cover no what is this this can't be the right thing oh, i can't look at the back side that's okay but that can't be it that's not the right one right what the hell maybe 244 action oh because it's action comics 244 not superman 244 Oh, that makes sense. Okay, well, let's look at the really low-priced one. That might be a better chance for us to figure this out. Yeah, okay, so this one goes for about 40 and this is the one that we were looking at, I guess. Okay, so like 40 bucks. Let me look at one of the more mid-priced ones, just in case, to see if it's like the same thing. It is the same thing, but I assume it's probably in, like, a better condition, I suppose. I guess that's what it's supposed to be. So I guess, like, you know, if they're if they're in a higher condition, which is clearly not the case with some of these. I feel really bad. Oh, my God, this one even has a hole in the plastic. That's terrible. It's all taped up, though, that's for sure. Um, the plastic, not the comic book. The comic book is not taped up just the plastic um but it does have a hole in it i guess i probably should get like oh see it sucks that there isn't any like uh what's it called there isn't any comic book stores where i live at least i'm pretty sure there aren't anyways um yeah this one's kind of torn up so i guess that like this is probably actually within like the 40 dollar range or something like that based on that one particular price so that's probably good to know, I suppose. I am kind of curious about... Oh, this one is really cool. Look at this one. So this is All-Star Comics Justice Society. Number oh, and it has Dr. Fate. Oh, I used to love Dr. Fate. And it's got... Um, what is his name? Jay Gordon? Jay Gordon Flash? Isn't that his name? Jay something? Something or other? I think his name was Jay, right? Let's see here. Let me go ahead and get rid of this because I don't care about this anymore. Um, what the hell was that guy's name? I had a page uh, set up so that I could kind of like look up random characters. Um, let's see. His name was Jay, wasn't it? No, not Jack Flash. I don't even know who Jack Flash is. Get out of here. Oh my god, there's a, 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 a comic book character called The Beano. That's amazing. I love it. Oh, because Jack Flash was a character in The Beano. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, listen here, you guys. <laughs> this is not what I'm looking for. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, well, I'm going to ignore it. It's fine. Um, but yeah, like it's got Dr. Fate in here, which is really cool. I was, I always thought like, um, I always thought Dr. Fate was super cool in case you guys can't see his face. There he is right there. I thought Dr. Fate was super rad. Um, because the thing that was really interesting to me about Dr. Fate is that like Dr. Fate is like an omnipotent godlike being like trapped inside of a helmet. So like... And the th whole thing with Dr. Fate that made him so cool is that the person who would wear the Dr. Fate helmet was just, like, a random dude. That, like, like, and the whole thing is that, like, they kind of had this whole story that, you know, the random, like, dudes that would wear the Dr. Fate helmet had, like, mental fortitude. Like, really, like, they were very mentally stable and, like, had really strong mental fortitude. And the whole thing was that Dr. Fate was like a helmet that was um, like controlled by like an omnipotent being, like the omnipotent being possessed the helmet. 
and you would put the Doctor Fate helmet on, and that omnipotent being would basically puppet master the human body wearing the helmet, which was super cool. So, like, and then you would, like, the human being who wore the helmet would gain all of the powers of that omnipotent being and, like, the mental, like, capacity and, like, intelligence of Dr. Fate, which was super cool. But what made it super interesting was that, like, the person who wears the helmet slowly goes insane over time like because like and and i think they also made it like they did a couple of things which is first of all the person who would wear the helmet the mortal being who would wear the helmet and become dr fate would only be dr fate while they were wearing the helmet and it would make them go slowly insane and they find themselves becoming addicted to wearing the helmet because like they basically would become like um like schizophrenic essentially and the only way that they could block out the insanity and the schizophrenia was by wearing the dr fate helmet it's super cool like i always thought that was really really cool that's why dr fate was always a really um interesting character to me and like it's really interesting too because he actually like feels bad about having to do that to people like he like you know he regrets that that's the effect that you know he has over people when he forces them to you know wear the helmet and all that um i'm sorry i'm falling behind too uh people are talking about um digimon and stuff like that <laughs> he probably threw out the supply and raised the price on the uh on the um What's it called? The, the Austin Powers card game. I'm telling you guys, I'm making the prediction right now. I'm making the prediction right now that in the future, everybody's going to start investing in Austin Powers cards and it's going to be a big deal and everybody's going to wish that they had, you know, um, properly invested in them. Uh, <laughs> everybody's talking about Digimon. This is not a Digimon stream, you guys. What the hell? talking about digimon i'm sorry for even bringing it up i feel terrible i shouldn't have even brought it up um okay so let me try justice oh wait justice society number 69 that's how i hope it's worth a lot because that's how it uh okay they didn't like that <laughs> okay fine you want me to type out the full damn name i'll do it um all-Star Comics, Justice Society number 69. No, they didn't like that either. Well, how the hell am I supposed to find, like, this comic book? How did I find it before? I used a different website before. Justice Society, did I spell it right? It looks like I spelled it right. Hmm. The legendary Justice Society. Maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe I need to get rid of this. The legendary just no, they didn't like that either. Maybe maybe I could just Google it. Um Justice Society Number 69? That's how. <laughs> Let's see what we got going on here. Uh Ulster's Comic Volume 169? Is that it? I don't even know if that's it. Issue maybe this is it. Let's take a look. That's it. That's the that's the one, I guess. I don't think this Oh my god, this place has comic book like price tags too? No. That's kind of cool. Let's see. Is this the Yeah, it's the same one. This one says it's like 54 bucks. That's kind of neat. Nifty, nifty. I just like the idea like uh Oh, and look at how rad green. Look at the popped popped collar Green Lantern has going on here. That's so crazy. I know that there's kind of like the Flash, there were like a few different Green Lanterns, so it's kind of cool, because this is like, considering that this is um, the old school J Flash, um, then this is probably like the oldest Green Lantern, you know? That's kind of rad as hell. Star Spangled Kid? Who the hell is Star Spangled Kid? I've never even heard of this guy. 
and uh, and introducing oh the huntress oh that's so cool that's so cool that they have the huntress in this one i don't know if you guys could hold on let me make sure you guys yeah the huntress that's um batman's daughter or i don't know if that's actually the original one though that's really wild i don't know who the hell power girl is i don't know if you guys could see that i have never heard of power girl I have no idea who the hell that is all right, but it looks like that I'm going with this, I guess, because the other one won't tell me. But I'm going to go with the idea that this thing's probably about, like, 54 bucks, which is kind of nifty. Um, I guess. I don't know. The Justice Society, though. That's cool. I would love... Oh, my God. That would be so cool now that I think about it to do a video talking about Dr. Fate. He's so rad. I don't know. I like him. I like Dr. Fate. He's super cool. All right, well, let's keep moving on, shall we? Oh, this is an old one. Wow, look at how old this sucker is. Detective Comics number 379. Wow, it's a Batman comic for sure, but look at how old school this thing is, you guys. Oh my goodness. Sometimes I forget that I even have these, you know? Like, I don't even know where he got these. My, my father, I mean, like... I don't even, like, he must have just, like, he used to tell me that there was a comic book shop that he used to hang out at all the time when he was younger. And, like, he would just go in and, like, the comic book guy, who he knew, I guess, on a pretty good level, would just be like, oh, yeah, like, I got these comic books for sale. And, you know, I'll, I'll like, he used to tell me that the guy used to give him comic books for free. And he would buy them in, like, big stockpiles, like, where it would just be like, yeah, I'll give you, like, a good price if you just take all of them off my hands, you know? So, let's go ahead and try this out. Detective Comics number 379. Let's see what we get out of this. There it is. No. I don't believe you. <laughs> you guys see that right there? I don't believe you. I don't no no shut up don't you don't you lie to me better not be lying to me I think that's based on the idea if it's like in perfect condition which this thing is clearly not um oh my god $65 my ass <laughs> like what Oh, but then again, I don't know, because I don't think these are in... I mean, maybe it is, like, around 65 bucks, because it's not in, like... I don't know if you guys can see it. There's, like, some fraying and some color deterioration down here on the bottom. And, like, there's clearly, like, you know, like a, a, a slightly, you know, messed up edge right here on the top. Um, so it, it might actually be around 65 bucks rather than, you know, the insane 1,700 that I'm looking at here, which is ludicrous. <laughs> it's ludicrous. <laughs> I don't know if you guys happen to notice this, but I'm planning to open a bank. <laughs> Stupid. What is this one about? Because it's got Batman on the monitors. And this guy on the cover saying, with Batman, nothing is impossible. I ordered him killed, and he's getting bumped off in two different places at the same time. It's two Batmans in one. That's crazy. I actually love that kind of stuff. I love it when they have these, like, um, these crazy opening, you know, panels on the front of the covers to, like, draw you in, to be like, oh, how is that possible that there's two Batman? There can't be two Batman. That's just not a thing that happens. What? And then you, like, want to, like, open it up and read it. <laughs> That's so cool. I love it. Oh, man, comic books were so cool back in these days. This is why I want to do this more on my channel, you guys, because, like, I do, like, when I actually, like, put my mind to it, I do think comic books are, like, especially the older ones, are, like, super interesting. Like, like I said, like, I, like, I mean, they have the ones like this, where all you get is a splash page, and they're not, like, really throwing you into the story. Like, they're drawing you in with a really cool splash page and all that, to, like, be like, oh, like, crazy battle time, like, oh, I want to read this. But I really like this one, where it's, like, they just straight up took, like, a really interesting panel that's probably in the comic book 
and then like used it because it's so interesting and you're like that's right how could there be two batman there isn't there isn't two batman that's not a thing which is like what draws you in because you're like oh this is an actual piece of the story and it's super interesting and i want to know the answer you know and then they just use that as a splash page i think that's really rad two batmans for the price of one yeah i can dig it i can dig it i think that's really rad though that it's it's got this insane value to it I mean, like I said, this is not exactly the best condition. Like most of these comic books, I don't think um, would ever could ever be considered to be like you know nine point whatever. Um, except for maybe the ones that are bagged, but like these are clearly not. I mean, they are in plastic bags, but when I said bagged, I mean like sealed bag. So like you know maybe some of the sealed bag comic books would probably be like nines or whatever. Um, but sadly, most of these ones probably won't be that way. They're still really rad, though, that's for sure. Like, there's no getting around the fact that these are rad as hell. Um, I also should probably try to, like, make sure that they stay relatively flat. There we go. Okay. I had something under them that was preventing them from being flattened out. Oh, okay, well, let's see what we got here. Now we've got a Superman comic book. My dad was actually... I know that most people seem to not be very big fans of Superman. Um, my dad was actually a very big fan of Superman. He loves Superman comic books. Um, I don't know if it was necessarily his number one favorite, but he did like Superman a lot, and he definitely collected a lot of Superman comic books. Um, so let's see. This is Superman issue number 237. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Superman? Not Mayne. He's not Mayonnaise. Um, <laughs> one, two, thirty-seven. Let's take a look here. There it is. Uh, two eighty. Whoa. That's yeah, but these are all like perfect condition ones. See, I don't know how I would be able to grade these. Like, I, I don't even, like I said, because, like, I can immediately see some, like, wearing on, around the, like, staples and stuff like that. Um, there's definitely some, you know, color damage and stuff like that. So, like, I want to go with the idea that these will probably be sixes or sevens, I guess. I don't know. Like I said, I don't really know all the rules about grading comic books. Um, and I can see, like, a little wrinkle right there, too. Uh, or uh, that's not a wrinkle, that's a crease. Um, yeah, that's like a crease right there. But uh, So I'm going to go with the idea that these are probably sixes or sevens, so like 20 bucks. So not 80. <laughs> I'm going to go with the... I think what happened was when I graded these the first... Or not graded, when I looked up their prices the first time, uh, it's probably what happened was I just went with like the top price, which is like perfect condition, fresh off the press, you know, kind of style. And that's clearly not true for these comic books. Um, so I'm kind of realizing that uh, these are probably not as valuable as I originally expected them to be. <laughs> Which is fine. It's not a big deal. I'm okay with it. I like all the zombies, though. What's going on here? Let's see. Uh, yeah, they all look like zombies. You've turned us into monsters, Superman! We don't want you on Earth anymore! Get off and stay off! We're all zombie men. Superman. En Here, hold on. Let me make sure you guys can see it. Superman, enemy of Earth. We all knew it would happen someday. <laughs> I do kind of want to like, uh, like I said, like I do actually have like a, a site um, off to the side here that supposedly is supposed to give me like wiki information about what's going on in these comic books. Let me see if I can... If I can find something about why these people look like zombies. Let's see here. Superman number 237, baby. Let's see what we got. Uh, ah, there it is. Enemy of Earth. Ooh. Let's see. Ooh, look at, listen to this. Superman is carrying a virus that turns the people of Earth into monsters in the issue 237, Enemy of Earth. The Enemy of Earth, written by Denny O'Neill, penciled by Kurt Swan, and inked by Murphy Anderson. Okay. Well, I guess they don't want to give, like, I definitely have noticed that uh, this website, even though it gives you, like, a basic description, they don't really go into too much detail about it. 
Um, it'd be kind of interesting to see, uh, excuse me. It would be interesting to see like actual, like full blown explanations or synopsis of what's going on in each different one. But that's pretty interesting on its own, just knowing that he's, like, a carrier for some kind of weird virus that's uh, causing everybody to become, like, a zombie man. That's pretty rad as hell. That's pretty rad. I like it. These look collectible as fuck. Old stuff is cool. Dude, I... <laughs> I, I have a collecting problem. See, like, uh, I mean, like, comic books and, and cards are not even, like, the tip of the iceberg for me. Um, I collect boxes too, you guys. It's really not good. <laughs> like, for example, guys, I have an old um, Nintendo 64 box in, like, really good condition. Why? Because when I was a kid, I thought it was collectible, so I collected it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I was such a dork when it came to stuff like this. Um, okay, so moving on. Let's see what we got here. Uh, ooh, this one actually looks like it's in pretty decent condition. Um, let me actually get it. It looks like it's frayed on the top corner a little bit. Pages seem a little off, just a wee bit. This one's in pretty good condition, though. I'd say that looks pretty damn good. Uh, so it's a Batman. Batman special holiday issue. Oh, goodness. He's celebrating Christmas, kids. Christmas with Mr. Batman. Let's take a look here. What do we got? 247? I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm kinda I'm kinda I'm kinda really getting into this, you guys. Let's see. Number 247. Hmm. Batman 247. If it's in perfect condition, it's worth four hundred dollars, which it probably isn't. I mean, this looks actually this is one of the best looking condition ones I've seen so far, to be honest. I mean like I said, like there's a um, there's a frayed corner just a little bit right up here, and there's a little wear on the side here. But other than that, like the the staples are in great condition, like legit. The staples look great. Um, and there's there's like a it looks like there's a crease down here at the bottom, which I just now noticed. Um, I would probably say I don't know. I mean, maybe like maybe like an eight. Maybe 8.5? I don't I don't know like the rules on on I don't know these rules. Um let's see what this guy's saying here. So we have some guy who's in like a ski mask at a ski resort, it looks like. And it's celebrating Happy New Year! Deadly New Year! Uh -oh. And it says, at the stroke of midnight, everybody in Gotham gets struck dead. So you mean this asshole in a ski mask and a and a Christmas sweater? With a, with a, um, oh, I thought it was a Molotov cocktail, but it looks like he's actually got, like, um, like some kind of bio, bioengineered weapon of mass destruction or something. And it looks like he's getting ready to kill everybody on New Year's Eve. That's kind of cool. I can dig it. What does the wiki say? I want to know. Hold on. Let me see what the wiki says. This is really fun. <laughs> uh, Batman 247. Let's see what we got going on here. Batman number 247. There it is. Merry Christmas! That's what it's called. That's literally the name of this issue. It's called Batman two, number 247, Merry Christmas. Oh, nobody's done a wiki for it. So there's no information about what this is about. Well, I mean, I can get an idea of what it's about based on looking at the cover. Uh, probably some guy who's going to release some kind of bioweapon to kill everybody on New Year's Eve. Okay. That's kind of cool. I can dig it. 20 cents, baby. Oh, but raised to $1.50. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. I love it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's go ahead and move on. I like I said, I would actually love to like know some of the um, the details about some of these. Um, All right. So we got Batman 249. And it says, I found the secret arsenal of the underworld. Uh, now to take them by surprise, says Batman. And everybody's got a gun pulled on him. I love it. That's so good. Uh, let's see how it looks. So I can definitely see some some creasing action along the, uh, the staples. 
um, which are pretty normal creases, I think. This corner here is really frayed badly. Look, you can see it right there. Frayed super bad. Not too good, not too good, but that's okay. Um, and I guess I'll go ahead and look it up, might as well, just because that's what we're doing, I guess. Uh, number 249... Hmm, 249, baby. Let's take a look. Yeah, Batman number 249, 375 for top condition, which means that's definitely not what we're looking at here. Uh, I'd say it's probably in like the five or six category. So like eh, 30 to 40 bucks, I guess. That's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. I can dig that. This thing, like, this thing right here, though, like, that fray is super-duper bad. So that probably is the, the deal-breaker on this guy right here. And uh, let me take a look, see if any if there's any wiki information about it, huh? Maybe there is. Who knows? Let's see. Batman number 249. Uh. There he is, Batman number 249. Ooh, there's a description here. It's like one sentence, though. It says, Bruce Wayne pretends to be a heartless snob in order to lure a wealthy man with gang ties into the Batman's grasp. That actually sounds really cool. I'd be down for that. I like it when, like, they do, because, like, that's, like, a theme that they hint on in a lot of, like, the Batman movies and some of the Batman stories is that he purposefully acts like, you know, a rich, snobby bastard just to, like, as a feint to, like, trick other, like, rich, snobby bastards into making bad choices, you know? And I thought that was always really kind of cool. Batman has always been kind of, like, my favorite um, superhero character, to be totally honest. I, I love him to death. I think he's great. Um, oh, Iron Man! I James P! I didn't see you there. I'm sorry, buddy. He says, since all comic books are becoming movies and theme parks are, uh, theme park all collectibles like MTG skyrocketing with comics, etc. I mean, I guess that makes sense. I mean, who knows? Maybe, like, um, if I continue to hold on to these for, like, a really long time, like, even these ones, which are not in the greatest condition, might even skyrocket at some point, you know? Uh, okay, so now we got a lot of Batman comics. <laughs> A lot of Batman comics. Um, Bat like I said, Batman was always my favorite. Uh, there's some. There's definitely some creases down here in the corner. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's some creases. You can see that one pretty easily. Uh, there's a couple of creases along the staples, but it's not super bad. There's just one really bad one right here. Uh, other than that... There's a little tiny bit of fraying, but that's part of the crease on this side. It's not that bad, actually. This one looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and take a look at it, shall we? Shall we? 30 to 40 bucks is pretty good compared to dollar bin comics. Yeah, I guess that's true, Ratherwood. I mean, I can't... Like, I mean, I'm not trying to scoff at, like, 30 to $40 comics, you know? Like, I mean, it's, it's just, like... It's just when you... You know, when I looked at that one comic book and they're like, Oh, yeah, like... $1,400, and I was like, what? <laughs> no, shut up. Shut your face. Shut your face. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and take a look at this bad boy. I kind of get the impression that most of these are kind of close to being in the same range, particularly. So it says here this one goes for... Oh, I just realized the character here is... Um, the Spook? That's not who I thought that was. I thought it was the Spectre. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Spectre. Um, the Spectre is the Green Lantern when he... Like, I think that the Spectre is when the Green Lantern dies, right? Isn't that what that is? Let me take a look real quick. I want to look that up. The Spectre. Yeah, the Spectre is the Green Lantern... See, the Spectre is a supernatural being of near unlimited might whose mission is to unleash the vengeance of God upon evil men. He is bound to souls of deceased humans. His power and personality varies depending upon the anima he occupies. Spectre has been bound to many hosts during the modern ages. 
His most popular and most recurring host being Jim Corrigan, who I'm pretty sure is Green Lantern. Very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting character. Um, but that's not who this guy looks is, even though it looks like him. This is... Because, like, the... Um, sadly, the sticky note is right on his face. Um, the Spectre always kind of has that green cloak, and he's got the the gray like body you know like green like gray limbs and stuff like that so the fact that he's wearing a green cloak and he's got these like gray hands i thought it was the specter but they say batman unearths the grave of the spook only to have his coffin become his own Woo! all right let's take a look here <laughs> um right seven hundred dollars for a 9.8 which is this is clearly not a 9.8. Uh, I would say this one maybe is probably in like the 7 range maybe. So like that looks like it's about 30 to 40 bucks I guess. Not bad. Not bad. Very nice. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I'm not... You know what? Let me see. I, I mean, I feel like the, like the wiki, if I were to look up the wiki, I bet you it's just basically this right here. <laughs> it's probably just this little little synopsis right here on the cover so i don't think there's much of a reason to necessarily look up what the the wiki page has to say about it i guess oh wow oh man this one is <laughs> this comic book is busted to shit you guys holy crap look at the um oh my god look at the fraying all along the side here look at that i don't know if you guys can see that Oh my god, it the the binding, which is probably just like the two staples or whatever, is just absolutely frayed to shit. Look at that. You guys probably I'm sorry, I'm kind of making it hard to here. Can you guys see that? Look at that. Look at that. Oh my god, it is so frayed so badly. And then, like, there's all the fraying on the sides. Tons and tons of fraying. There's, like, a, a very awkward, um, what is that, crease mark right there? I don't even know how you get crease marks like that. That's so strange. Like, it's like a triangular-shaped crease mark. Look at that. I don't even know how that happens. And there's some creasing right here as well. This one is totally destroyed. <laughs> totally destroyed. I love it. Um, oh my goodness gracious. Oh, you thought it was the Riddler because of the green cape? No, I thought it was the Spectre, but apparently it's the Spook. Never heard of the Spook. Don't even know who the Spook is supposed to be. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this. This one, there's no way. This is like, this is such a bent out of shape comic book. It's ridiculous. Uh, Detective Comics... Number 337. 337. There we go. Oh, no, not 3327. 337. All right, let's take a look here. Wow, well, if it wasn't busted to shit, it would be worth 4K. <laughs> That's so lewd. Look at that. Look at that insane bullshit. Oh, my God. Okay, let's go down to something a little more reasonable. So, I'm going to say this is probably like a 4 or a 5, maybe? And even a 4 or a 5 is between $50 to $60, which is pretty ridiculously insane. I, like, wow. Um, obviously, I put a 100 here, which is clearly not correct because it's totally busted to shit. There's just no way. Um... But hey, 50 and 60, 50 to 60 bucks, considering how torn up this thing is, is pretty all right, if I say so myself. I don't think that's bad in the slightest. Like, sweet Jesus. That's pretty cool. I want to I wanna know, deep the deep freeze menace. Who is the deep freeze menace? He looks like he's a caveman. Is he just like a caveman who's been busted out of the ice? Is that what's going on here? Hold on, I need to know. Detective Comics... Number, what did I say, 337? I think that's what it was. 337, okay. Detective Comics 337, which is not here. It's not here. It's not here at all. 
Okay, fine. I don't even care. Let me see if, um, let me see if I could just type in the deep freeze menace and maybe they'll know what I'm talking about. Let's see what I get. The deep freeze menace. Let's take a look here. Oh shit, there it is. I looked up Deep Freeze Menace and they knew him. Whoa, there's such a big wiki on this. The wiki on this is like th four paragraphs. Somebody really cared about this comic book in particular. Uh, Batman and Robin battle a caveman named Clag, who has various superhuman abilities, including flight, super strength, and the ability to spray gas from his icy armor. 50,000 years ago, the Cro-Magnon hunter named Clag attempted to stop a thief. However, during the struggle, Clag was knocked into a cavern and was trapped in a state of suspended animation. In present times, the area thought out, and Clag now encased in ice and endowed with superhuman abilities, including flight, super strength, and the ability to spray gra glass, gas... Gas, the word is glass, not grass, not glass. He sprays gas from his icy armor. He flies to Gotham City where he starts attacking everything in sight. There the creature is attacked by Batman and Robin who are fought off easily and Clag flies away later in the Batcave. Okay, um, later in the Batcave, Batman deduces that Clag is searching for the thief he tried to stop in his own time. A thief that bears a striking resemblance to Bruce Wayne. Uh-oh. Devising a pl a pla it says plastic, but I think it's supposed to say plastic. So, devising a plastic sealant device, Batman and Robin then track down Clag to his next location. They find Clag in Spain somehow. <laughs> He teleported. He teleported. He flew. I'm sorry. He flew from Gotham to Spain, I guess. Um, they find Clag in Spain attacking a bullfighter who also resembles Bruce Wayne. Got a lot of doppelgangers here, Brucey. And the two interrupt Clag's attack. While Robin keeps Clag busy, Batman sprays the crow magnet with enough plastic sealant to render him inert. They then turn him over to the authorities in hopes that he can be freed from the ice, which is the source of his powers, and be assimilated into modern-day society. Okay! Roll credits. <laughs> Somebody really went ham on that, uh, on that wiki page there for him. That's crazy. I love it. That's so cool. Um, I wish it was in better condition, really. Um, because then it would be worth, like, a, a, a freaking K. Like, a K and a half. Holy shit. Um, but it's still pretty cool. Ooh, look at that. Extra, a new elongated man story. My dad has actually told me that he's a big fan of the elongated man. Uh, I don't know very much about the elongated man, but my dad... The only thing I know about the elongated man, that's not true, um, is he was an extremely important character in one of my favorite comic book graphic novels, which is called Identity Crisis. Um, the Elongated Man was a super important character in that storyline. So that's pretty much all I know about the Elongated Man. Um, but my dad said that he was actually a big fan of the Elongated Man. And what he used to tell me was that the Elongated Man was primarily a detective who eventually gained the ability to, like, stretch his body, like, you know, like, you know, make himself super stretchy and stuff like that. But my dad said that the reason why he was such an interesting character and why he liked him so much is he said that the elongated man was a very intelligent detective who was very good at solving really hard-to-understand uh, mysteries. And uh, so that's why my dad really liked him a lot. But, uh, yeah... Anyways, that's kind of a cool little issue there. I like that one. And I mean, it's too bad it's not in better condition, but, you know, it's all good. Um, <laughs> it's just cool to have, though. Like, I like the, the little synopsis on the wiki for that. That's really cool. Uh, <laughs> Encino Man. <laughs> hey, you boy, Lettuce. Glad to have you in here, bro. We're just, uh, we're looking at some of my old vintage comic books. Um, oh, it looks like we got that Super Squad again, the All-Star Comics, and it looks like it's got, once again, 
Dr. Fate, The Flash, uh, Wildcat? I don't know who Wildcat is. Star Spangled Kid, which I call it a hunch. I don't think he's been one of the most popular heroes of all time because I sure as hell haven't heard of him. I still don't know who Power Girl is. I have no idea who Power Girl is. And it looks like Robin's in here too. Also, look, look at this rad ass costume Robin is rocking. He's got his like, he's got this like black face mask, which is very reminiscent to like Batman. And like his costume doesn't look all funkalicious. Like he actually looks like he's got a pretty decent costume going on there. I'm kind of digging it. Uh, let's see here. Super squad. Uh, and then it says Star Spangled Kid is saying, maybe you were too tough for the Justice Society, but mister, now you've got to fight the Super Squad. Oh no, Dr. Fate, what happened? He looks like he's dealing with a really serious headache down there, poor guy. Uh, ladies love the elongated man. I bet they do. <laughs> they love that elongated man. Maz says, Mr. Freeze is the only ice villain I can think of. I always really liked, um, there was actually a really cool, um, ice villain that I liked. Um, I think he was also in, like, a DC television show as well. Uh, what was his name? He also, like, so there was, the, there was this really cool duo of bad guys that the two of them like would be be bad guys and then they would be good guys and then they would be bad guys and then they would be good guys and it was a guy with ice powers and a guy with um fire powers and they worked together all the time they were like a duo and i think they were originally introduced as being villains and then over time they became superheroes like good guys and then they went back to being villains again and then went back to being superheroes and I recall also that there was like a really interesting story where there was a superhero who stopped being a superhero. He was like a well-known one. And he took on being the the freezy guy, like the freezy villain guy. And I just can't remember their names. I, I, I just, I feel bad because they're super cool. But, um, you know, there there's a few characters that use ice powers that are kind of interesting. Um, let's see here. Your boy Les is talking about the armor farts. I assume probably when I was, uh, saying the wrong title for that caveman character. Well, let's, let's look at this. Let's, let's see if we can find, uh, this issue on the price guide here. Just out of curiosity for funsies. For funsies, um, let's see. All-Star Comics, uh, Super Squad. Let's see here. Super Squad. Uh, number 58. Let's see what we get. No comics found. Cool beans. All right, well, let's try maybe All-Star Comics. <gasps> Excuse me. Nope, they didn't like that either. Okay, well, let's get rid of Super Squad and see if that works. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. So just all-star comics. Okay, fine. 1,900. You be... Okay, hold on. We got to look at the condition of this bad boy. Guys, this might be one of the best condition comics I've seen so far now that I'm actually looking at it. So no fraying of any kind whatsoever. There's no fraying on the side. There's absolutely... Like, no, um, what's the word? There's no, um, creases. Like, no creases on any of the corners at all. No fraying on the top. No fraying on the bottom at all. The staples are in great condition. There's no creases along any of the staples. This might single-handedly be the highest quality comic book I've come across in this, like, collection so far. Let's take a look at the back just in case. Yeah, no creases at all. No fraying of any sort whatsoever. This actually might be worth $1,900, you guys. <laughs> so, oh no, is that a stain? Oh no, that's actually shading on the comic book. Okay, okay, that actually scared me. So there's a shadow of like the guy like looming over the heroes who are like harmed. 
And when I first looked at it, I thought it was like a stain. <laughs> I was like, oh no, <laughs> not a stain. All right, so this, I'm going to say that this might actually be worth $1,900. But then again, I don't know because there's a 9.6 here worth 625. And then there's this 9.8, which is like worth almost $2,000. So I don't know. Like, if there was ever, out of this entire collection that I've seen so far, if there was a comic book that was probably worth grading, it's probably this one right here. This guy right, this bad boy right here is probably the nicest looking I've seen so far. And I don't see any kind of damage to it at all. Not even slightly. And that's amazing considering that also there's no cardboard on the back to protect it either. So that might be something I'll have to, like, deal with later. So I'm going to put that one off to the side because that's hands down the nicest looking comic book I've seen so far easily well okay cool beans I and and just because I'm having so much fun doing this I'm gonna look up the wiki page and see what they have to say for themselves so let's see if we can get a wiki a wiki synopsis of this bad boy so uh all-star comics Number 58. All right. Like I said, this might be the biggest hit out of all the ones we've looked at so far. There it is. Okay, All-Star Comics number 58. Let's see if they actually have... Oh! Oh my God. So it looks like... Wow. There's actually... Oh my God. And the image they use to show the cover on this wiki page is actually in worse condition than the one that I have. <laughs> like, I can actually see the... Um, on the wiki page, the, the crease marks along the, the staples and stuff like that, which is kind of funny. Um, so yeah, there's actually a, a, a two paragraph synopsis here. So I'll go ahead and put this guy back on so we can kind of look at him while I kind of explain what the hell is going on in this comic book here. So, um, the wiki page here, let me bring that back up. It says in a single issue, Writer slash editor Gary Conway launched new adventures for the... Jo oh, this is just a synopsis of the entire series. Launched a new adventure of this Justice Society of America, added a younger element to the team, and revived a series that had not been published in more than a quarter of a century. Along with artist Rick Estrada... I've heard of that name. Rick Estrada? Does that sound familiar to you guys? Hold on a second. Rick Estrada... Am I spelling that correctly? Hold on a second. Rick. Because that name sounds super, super familiar to me. Strada. Uh, Rick Estrada, born in 1928, passed away in 2009, was a Cuban-American comic artist who worked for companies including the major American publisher DC Comics he also worked doing comic strips as well as political cartoons, advertising, storyboarding, and commercial illustration. I swear I've heard of this guy. Oh, and look at that. The issue that we're looking at is one of the top three um, things presented on his little portfolio here. That's super rad, man. I love that. That's really cool. Okay, let me move on to read the rest of this wiki. Um, Rick Estrada... Rick Estrada Conway also introduced the DC Universe to the cousin of Earth 2 Superman, Kara Zor. Kara Zor-El, a.k.a. Power Girl. Okay, so that's who Power Girl is. I didn't... Re okay, so Power Girl is the alternate universe Superman's cousin. Okay, good to know. Kara Zor-El. Interesting. When a, when a series of unlikely geological catastrophes threaten to destroy the world, the season G, JSA uh, super team split up to contain the disasters. Along the way, the JSA was surprised to find help in the form of three young superheroes, Robin, the star-spangled kid, now wielding Starman's cosmic rod. That's kind of hot. <laughs> and Power Girl in her debut role. Combining their forces, the heroes located and defeated the source behind the global catastrophes. Longtime nemesis Brainwave, who'd been given a new, more powerful body by another JSA adversary, 
per Degaton. Okay. Deciding to remain with the Justice Society, the younger heroes became the team's new auxiliary detachment, the Super Squad. That's super cool. I love it. <laughs> I love it. All right. So this might, like I said, this might be the most valuable comic book we've found so far in this collection. So I'm going to put it off to the side here. Um, I love that. I mean, I don't know. I'm not quite drawn into that story as much as I was drawn into the uh, the caveman story that we were looking at before. But that's still pretty cool. That's still pretty cool. I can dig it, man. I can dig it. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we have this next one, which is a Superman comic. And it is not looking too good. Look at that mess down there. That is a gnarly gnarly crease like i would be afraid just to like pull it out and try to fix it but i'm not even going to do that um there's lots of discoloration all over it so the the color is faded on superman's suit the color is faded over here on the edges you can even see um all the discoloration all the fading just right along the um the the staples over here on the side there's discoloration up here at the top I don't know what the hell this is. It looks like a pen mark. Actually, it looks like Crayola crayon. Oh my god, and there's creases all over the cover. Oh my god, you guys. This thing is really bent to shit. So there's creases all over it. There's fading in pretty much the whole thing. Uh, somebody took a purple Crayola crayon and just drew all over Superman's face here. I have no idea what the hell that's all about. So, yeah, this thing is just not doing too hot, like, at all. <laughs> I love it, though. I love it. Somebody clearly loved this comic book. I mean, they drew all over it, for God's sake. Um, I mean, I would say this is probably in the worst condition I've ever seen so far. I mean, the Crayola Crayon puts it in a level all on its own. But just for lols and, and laughs, let's... uh. Let's go ahead and look it up and see what we get. So this is issue number 206. Okay. Superman 206. Uh, it looks like that they don't have a proper price tag for it. So let's see. Uh, it doesn't look like it actually sells all that great either. It looks like the highest price range is 750 um ranges from 40 to i guess close to 300 which is pretty wild i would say we're probably at for this bad boy it would probably be less than 40 because it's somebody some person probably some kid who probably owned it at one point crayola all over his face like just gave no shits whatsoever which is it's hilarious i'm okay with it that's fine uh but what I, I now now that we've kind of evaluated that this thing is is totally destroyed to shit, um, which is in its own special way kind of hilarious. I want to know what this is, what's going on here. So we have some some people who look like pedestrians who look pretty pissed off. We have two purple guys dragging Mister Superman in chains, which obviously says that there's something weird going on because otherwise Superman would just break through the goddamn chains. Um, Let's see here. Uh, two purple guys. I have no idea what's going on here. We have a pedestrian down here who says, Execute the Superman from Earth before he gets his powers back. Oh, well, that's why he's in chains. Okay. Uh, he killed our hero, Dino Man. <laughs> okay, Dino Man is dead. Okay, good to know. Um, featuring the day Superman became an assassin. Well, wait a minute. Superman doesn't kill people. What's what's going on here? What's what's the dealio? What's the hibbity haps? Uh, okay, well, let's take a look. I'm curious. Like I said, the the fun of this, because I, I think I kind of explained to you guys that what I want to do here is at some point, I kind of want to like use these comic books to kind of like look at individual issues that are really interesting and maybe talk about the story and like some of the writers and some of the animators and stuff like that. Like, I really kind of want to do that. So to kind of get in the mood for that, that's why I'm looking up all the little wiki uh, blurbs about these issues. So let's go ahead and find out what was happening in this issue that caused Superman to quote unquote kill somebody, which I highly doubt. He's probably framed. That's normally how these go. 
Uh, Superman number 206. I'm not really seeing it here. What the hell? That's that's not Superman. Superman's looking good. I, I know you guys can't see what I'm looking at. I'm sorry. There's there. I was looking at Superman number 206 and nothing is coming up, but there is a Megami magazine with a beautiful anime waifu and it's Megami magazine issue number 206. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, I'm not seeing it here. I don't know what's going on. Um, let's see. It doesn't, um, maybe, maybe I could do Superman number 206, the day Superman became an assassin. Maybe that'll work. Let's see what we get here. Ah, there it is, number 206. Oh, is this a mi this is a mix six Pitalik story. Well, no wonder why it's super weird. For anybody who doesn't know, Mixix mi blah, blah, blah. Mixes Mixes Pitalik. That's his name. Mixes Pitalik. So, for anybody who doesn't know who Mr. Mixes Pitalik is, Mr. Mixes Pitalik is a how do you describe him? He's a leprechaun, right? I think that's how you would describe him. Mixus Pitalik is is a leprechaun, right? They don't really show. It looks like I can't really find an actual uh, picture of him. But Mixus uh, Mixus Pitalik is a leprechaun who is very commonly a villain in Superman comic books and. Mixus Pitalik is basically a guy who does weird things to Superman. Like, you know, messes with his powers or puts him in alternate realities or just changes reality around Superman. Or cha it's, it's, Mix, Mi Mixus Pitalik is like this omnipotent leprechaun character. But the thing with Mixus Pitalik is that he has a couple things about him, which is, first of all, um, if you say his name backwards, it banishes him to another realm. And also, he has this weird quirk where he can only speak the truth. And that was a really imp important character trait about him, because eventually that changes. Um, so he had this basically where he, he, would, he could tell riddles, but his riddles were always required to be truthful in some way. And he would always do these weird things to Superman, but he was like, he's, he was never allowed to like lie and he couldn't understand the concept of lying. And at some point there was actually a story where like Superman gets rid of Mixus Pitalik by lying to him which is not something that Superman does very often. And what happened was eventually, um, like, Mixus Pitalik, because he couldn't understand the concept of lying. It was something that his brain couldn't fathom. And eventually, Mixus Pitalik, after being banished to another realm, um, after Superman had told him a little white lie to kind of, you know get rid of him, uh, Mixus Pitalik kind of, like, meditated on what Superman had done to him, and eventually came to understand the concept of lying. And when Mixus Pitalik finally was capable of understanding what a lie was, and, like, how lies worked, it made Mixus Pitalik much, much more evil. Because then when he started plotting against Superman, he started lying to Superman and he started lying to other people and he would tell riddles that were actually lies. And it's pretty, pretty interesting stuff. He was a really, like, once he became, like, aware of, like, how lying functioned, it made him a much scarier villain, for sure. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say that the only thing that... Uh, that I can see here is that there's no real wiki information in here. They mentioned Mixel's Pitalik, um, but that's about it. So no, no information behind this comic book other than, uh, 
Superman loses his powers, probably due to Mixus Pitalik, and uh, this comic book is is really messed up. So, uh, did I look up a price range on it? I did. Wait, did I? I don't know if I did. Yeah, I did. So, like, I think it said like thirty, maybe forty bucks. So that's pretty good. It's pretty good, especially considering his face is all drawn up in crayon. <laughs> We all can admit that Superman probably had it coming. Uh, yeah, you have to say his name backwards. That's the secret, Bo Falcon. You have to be able to say Mixus Pitalik backwards. Um, yeah. So that's that guy. So let's see. We got another Superman comic here. Uh, let me just kind of evaluate. Ooh. That's uh, Clark Kent under Superman's silhouette. And it says, I quit. I'm through being Superman for good. Like, whoa, what's going on, man? Okay, so let's talk about the condition a little bit. So we have some some light fraying up here in the top corner. Actually, the whole corner is like right there at the top is... Here, let me show you guys. The corner is cut off right there. Um, there's definitely some crease damage down here at the top. Uh, up here at the top, I should say. There's some creasing down here at the bottom as well. Uh, very light, I guess. And the... It's not in terrible condition, but there is uh, a little bit of fraying and some staple creases along the side of the comic book. So, I don't know. Like I said, I, I'm not somebody who understands. Maybe what I'll do is I'll at some point kind of like look up how you can under. Oh, by the way, the fraying down here is really bad. Look at that. That's a weird one. That's a weird fray right there. Uh, I'll look up at some point about how to determine what condition a comic book is in or not. Um, like I said, the one up here, the the All-Star Super Squad one that we were looking at, that one is the best condition one I've seen so far. Um, I guess the backside, yeah, there's there's a rip right down there at the bottom. Look at that, I don't know if you guys can see that here. Kind of bring it up a little bit. See that? There's a big old rip. Tarzan! Me, Tarzan! You... Here, let me show you guys. Me, Tarzan! You build! <laughs> I have no idea what's going on there, but I love it. 1967! Whoa! That's so cool. I love it. All right. Okay, well, let's let's go ahead and, and kind of look at a general price range here, because that's clearly what we're doing. Okay. Go back up here to the top. And what do we got going on here? Uh, Superman number 201. Number 201. See what we get. Yep, there it is in all of its grand glory right there. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Not really showing much of a price range here, but let's see what we got for alternate prices. Whoa, so th these are like, whoa, whoa, no, come on, guys, no, stop it, stop, stop it, <laughs> look at these insane prices, why, why, why would you do this, why, oh my god, so, I mean, they're basically saying that the worst price that I could probably get on this is like 75 bucks, you guys. I mean, I would say this isn't the worst condition I've ever seen. Let me let me kind of see, like, if I take a look at the lowest price range they have here. Maybe they would show... Oh, that's like a 9.6. And the guy's selling it for $75. So then who are these other assholes selling it for like 5k? Who, like, what? How do you even get away with that? No, shut your face. These are different comic books. That's really weird. Okay, so this is a completely different comic book. Okay, so I guess then... I don't know, that's really strange. So, what about this one? Let me look at the, the second lowest price here. Yeah, these are different comic books. That's very, very weird. All right, well, I'm going to go with the idea then that if it's a 9.5 and it's selling for like $75, then I would say that this is probably... 
like a five or a six, right? I mean, it's got some fraying, it's got some creases, and it's got a little bit of damage as well, like some some uh, some tears down at the bottom. So maybe like a five, right? So what do you think that would be, like 30, maybe 40 bucks? I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, no, I don't believe these prices. Like these these ones that are like selling for like 6,000 are like clearly completely different comic books. I don't know why they're being sold at like they're being advertised as, you know, being this particular one on the page, which is very strange. I don't understand that. Um, but that's not what we're working with. So I'm going to go ahead and say that 75 for like a 9.5 version of this and like maybe best possible guess would be like 20 or 30 bucks for like this one, which would probably be like maybe a five condition or something like that. I don't know. I, I really don't. I don't know how to like properly understand the quality and, and the price ranges on these. I'm just having fun here. That's all I'm doing. Um, I definitely want to see if there's a blurb about this because this one looks really cool. This is basically saying that Superman is uh, quitting being Superman. So let's go ahead and find out what what the dealio is. What why is why is our good friend Mr. Clark Kent quitting being a Superman? Why does he why is he choosing to to you know, hang the cape as they like to say? Let's take a look here. So uh none of these are the right one. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. He abandons being Superman. No information. Oh my god, and the cover they use is in way worse condition than what I've got. That's nuts. Um, the cover is an homage to the cover of The Amazing Spider-Man number 50. Oh, that's so cool! It is! That's rad! So, Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man number 50 uh, is a issue of Spider-Man where he hangs up the costume. And it has the exact same style cover as this, where it shows Spider-Man looming over Peter Parker while Peter Parker walks away um, from being Spider-Man. That's really cool. It's an homage, it says. That's really neat. Was this one older than the other one then? It must be. That's crazy. Very interesting. See, it's stuff like that. That's why I want to, like, do, like, some of this stuff about, like, you know, talking about comic books and stuff like that. This is really cool. Um, we'll throw this one aside. There's no information about it on the wiki, sadly. That's too bad. Uh, I'll catch up on the comments just a little bit. I'm, I'm kind of trying to stay focused with the comic books, so I hope you guys don't mind that I'm not 100% keeping up with you guys. Um... The only way to defeat him is if you say his name. Yeah, but it's so difficult to say, so good luck. Yeah, Mix Mizix Pitalik or whatever. Fucking, he's crazy. Uh, oh yeah, backwards. Wasn't sure if that was him. Uh, there's several characters in mythology like that. Yeah, you have to say his name backwards. That was what the case was. Uh, let's see. Superman becoming Iron Man, killing the people he once saved. I think you're uh you're a little uh you're a little confused about DC and Marvel there, my friend Maz. Um that that doesn't happen. Uh okay, so what do we got going on here? Um Superman, the prisoner of the demon. What is going on? Oh, is that red kryptonite? No. Let's see. Um the demon. That makes me think of um whenever I hear of de the demon, I always think of um what's his name? Uh Rosal Ghoul. Ra wasn't that his name? Rosal Ghoul? Rosal Ghoul is referred to as the demon uh a few times. I don't know if it's the same guy though. Um but for example, they they like his daughter is called Daughter of the Demon, uh who's a really interesting villain on her own. Uh Let's see what's going on here. I want to I want to know. I want to know. So, the first thing I got to make commentary about is the condition, clearly. Um, so there's minor discoloration, like some of the color is faded down here in the corner. I don't know if you guys can really see that. It's a little tough to see it, but there's some discoloration here and here. Uh tiny bit of fraying. It's not that bad though. It's just barely it's only just barely there. Um corner it, the corner is very very slightly creased like barely creased um 
there's definitely some some crease marks along the staples, which is sadly a pretty common condition. There's also some fraying along the spine that I can see. Right there, you can kind of see that there's some fraying. I don't know if you guys can actually see that right there, but right there, there's a little bit of fraying. Um, crease marks, uh, faded color. Let's see. How does... Oh, I can't see the back because of the cardboard. So it's actually in pretty okay condition. Um... I would say this is maybe like, I don't know, a six or a seven, probably. Like I said, once again, I don't know how they how they do this stuff, but um, that's just my guess, I guess. I don't know. Uh, what do we got going on here? Superman, the mystic jewel you're wearing has brainwashed you. Now repeat the demon oath. And then who is this? Oh, it's Superman actually saying it. Fellow demons, I pledge to use my superpowers to fight for the destruction, extortion, murder, and overthrow of nations, also known as Demon! <laughs> I am evil Superman, for I am brainwashed. Alright, I love it. <laughs> the Man of Steel as the Prisoner of Demon. Okay, well, let me look this guy up. Let's see what, what do we got what do we got going on here. It's too good. Hey, Clay Clay, it's been a while since I've seen you around here, homie. How you doing? We're just kind of looking over comic books, having a good time. I've been uh, looking up prices as well as reading little wiki blurbs about them. We're also kind of trying to analyze the condition of each one. So far, we have found one comic book that is in almost perfect condition. And it's probably worth about $1,400, which is kind of cool. If it is in actual perfect condition. Uh, which it looks like it is. Like, there's no fraying, no creases, no damage, no discoloration, nothing. So, that's pretty interesting. This one is is kind of messed up, but it's not in the worst condition I've ever seen. Like, it's actually pretty good looking. Um, okay, Superman, number 191. Let's take a look here. What do we got going on here? Superman, number 191, the demon. The demon. Let's see. So this is another one of those where they don't really have the price ranges. I get the impression that we're kind of getting into the ones that are... Oh. Okay. Uh, I was actually not expecting that. Um, let's see. I always like to take the lowest price one and kind of like look at that one. Okay. This is a seven. So I want to kind of like... I kind of want to zoom in. Is there a way for me to zoom in here? Click to enlarge. That's in really good condition, and that's considered to be a seven. Wow. That's like really, really good condition, which this thing is clearly not. <laughs> oh my Jesus. Um, wow. Uh, yeah, mine is kind of sad compared to this badass one over here. That's crazy. And that's only selling for like a hundred and... I don't even think it was a hundred. What was it? What did they say they were selling it at? Hundred and thirteen. Okay, so it was definitely in a hundred. That's really crazy. Wow. Very interesting. All right, so I mean, I don't know. Like, it's definitely not in that nice a condition. So, fifty, sixty bucks, maybe. I have no idea. I can't. I can't really know how what any of these are worth like i just don't understand it uh keep in mind the cgc can be brutal when it comes to grading i've never graded anything clayton i've never ever graded anything before um i don't even know how to go about grading something so whatever um well i mean considering how the condition of the really nice one that i have like and considering that this one that i'm looking at is like a seven Maybe that's what the one that I have is at. Maybe that one's at a 7, too, because this looks like it's in really good condition. Um, but anyways, there you have it. Uh, did I even look at the blurb? Maybe there's a blurb here. Just for funsies. Let's see. What do we got? What do we got for a blurb? Do we got a blurb? Give me a blurb. I want a blurb. I want a blurb. Where the blurb at? All right. Superman 191. Give me a blurb, baby. Okay, let's see what we got here. 
Ah, uh, there it is. Prisoner of the Demon. No blurb. You get nothing. Okie dokie then. Thank you. I get no information and fine, be that way. I don't even care. I don't even care. That's fine. We don't need a blurb. Let's move on. Let's move on. Oh, this one's cool. Uh, okay, so... 80-page giant Batman special, a prize collection starring Robin, the boy wonder, issue number 185. Well, okay, so first thing we got to care about is obviously the condition. So that's gnar. That's gnarly right there. That's just a whole corner gone right there. Um, ignoring that corner, we got uh, fraying and uh, creasing on the corner over here. Uh, we got a little bit of wear along the spine. It's actually not the worst I've ever seen, but it's still fraying nonetheless. Um, or I should say not necessarily fraying, but uh, yeah, definitely discoloration, definitely some wear, that's for sure. Um, can I look at the backside? No, I can't. Okay. So Batman special to issue 185. Um, okay, well, let's take a look. Superman doing his no-power bondage routine again. Yeah, he seems to be really into that. I'm starting to think that Superman is kind of an S&M kind of boy, you know? He has to be, right? You'd think so. Let's see, Batman... Should I type in special? Maybe I should just type in Batman number 185 and see what we get. Number 185. Wow, they have it right there. Look at that. Uh... So this thing's pretty brutalized. I mean, it's not the worst, but it's still pretty, pretty up there. Uh, weirdly enough, we're getting into some low price ranges. <laughs> Whereas compared to that one, that's like worth like, I, like 1000, like sweet Jesus. Um, let's see here. Yeah. 124, 19, $16. Oh God. No. <sighs> Oh, God. Well, oh, no. This is something totally different. Okay. <laughs> I was like, no. Why? Why you do this? Why? Okay. Hold on. Uh, this is also not the right one. Uh, okay. So the next lowest one would be this one. There it is in all of its grand glory. Uh, okay. So this one's like, what did it say? Like 86 bucks? No, that's not the right one. So this one's going for about 124. It's considered to be a 6.0, I guess. Let's take a look here. Whoa, that is in way better condition than whatever the hell I've got. I'm starting to think like everything that I have here is like a three. <laughs> All the creasing and wear and tear. Oh God, they're probably threes, maybe even ones. I don't know. The point is, is I own them and they are mine. So who cares? Man, look at that. That is something, huh? That's crazy. I mean, I don't think that it's possible for me to like look up a blurb on this one because it looks like it's telling like four different stories. Complete book length novel plus five. Oh, so they're saying this one is like a full book story and then they have like five additional stories or something? That's pretty interesting. The hell is Robin doing here? What are you doing? Great Scott! Something in this jungle has given Robin super strength and also affected his memory. He doesn't recognize me! I'm gonna get you, Batman! I'm gonna punch you in the face! Because <laughs> I'm Robin, the boy jerk! <laughs> Oh no, and Robin is coming to terms with having to deal with Bat Jr. Oh no! Why? No, poor Robin! You have competition! What are you gonna do? Oh god. That's so good. It's so silly. The boy wonder confesses. Oh god, he's got secrets and he's on national television. Ladies and gentlemen, from coast to coast, I can't contain my sacred any longer. I, Robin, am really Dick Grayson, and that makes Batman Bruce Wayne. Everybody knows. And Batman's like, oh, how could you, Robin? Why, Dick Grayson, why? I love it how, like, whenever they present, like, Robin 
in like these little stories. He's always being a jerk. Like here he is being a jerk, punching Batman in the face. Here he is being a jerk, like revealing all their secrets on television. And here he is being a jerk because he's being jealous of Batman Jr. <laughs> I think, can we all just come to the conclusion that Robin's just a jerk? Is that what we're all supposed to learn from this? He's just a jerkwad? That's so funny. Oh my god, and this bad boy, he's so thick. This is like the heaviest and thickest comic book I think I've seen so far. That's a big bad boy right there. Too good, too good. I love it. <laughs> All right, what else do we got here? Oh, we got another collection special here. What's going on? Ooh, Batman, the 200th issue. Oh my God, guys, this is in good condition. Whoa. The only damage I can see is there's a little bit of wearing along the, along the spine. Very teeny tiny creases, very, very small. Um... A little tiny bit of wear in the corner over here. I don't know if you guys could see that right there. Let me take a look. Oh, let me get out of this, by the way. I'll go back over here. Um, yeah, there's like a teeny tiny bit of wear over here. There's minor amount of wear, very itty bitty creases along the spine. This one's in really good condition. Um, the corners have no fraying and no creasing whatsoever. Um, as far as I can see, there's no discoloration of any kind. Um, I can't see the back, though. So that's kind of, you know, that's a little disheartening that I can't see the backside. But yeah, like I said, it looks like the most amount of damage is probably on the spine, and it's really not even that bad. This one's great. This one looks awesome. Okay, well, let's look it up. Let's see what we got going on here. Dick Grayson was a dick, says Rathawood. That's hilarious. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Well, let's let's see what we got going on here. This is this is really really good condition. Like I'm actually pretty impressed by it. Uh, Batman issue number two hundred. Let's take a look. Batman number two hundred. There it is. Nine point eight goes for five thousand. Five and a half thousand. But then again, a 9.6 is 775. I'm getting the impression that when you have like a 9.8, that means that somebody basically pulled the comic book off the press and sealed it in a bag. Like, that's what I think this means. <laughs> oh, that's too good. Um, Nightwing Dick was way better. He wasn't a pansy anymore. Nightwing is cool. I like Nightwing for sure. Um, so 9.6 is 775, which is kind of neat. Let's see if we can kind of um, look at some of these. I want to see like a really, really high quality one. So let's see what we got going on here. Oh, okay, hold on. Let's take a look. Wow. Oh, and it's signed too. That's really interesting. Wow. That is like, um... oh, and look at that. Do you guys see that right there? There's some wear on this one. Look at it. You can see it right there, just barely. There's like a little crease line right there. Um, that's super interesting. I mean, obviously mine's not signed. Um, I would say that there is probably some discoloration in the sense of like the aging. So like, for example, his looks like that it's mostly white and pink. Whereas mine kind of has that like milky colored white, which is probably the act of um, aging over time. But I don't know. This one might be worth a fortune. Yeah, nine is mint, not even flipped through, no bend marks. Yeah, that figures. I don't know. This one seems like it would probably be worth quite a bit because there's pretty much little to no damage on it whatsoever. Um, the only thing is that, uh, like I said, you can tell that there's, um, some wear along the spine and that's about it. Um, but other than that, I can't see any damage of any kind, which is really cool. Um, now the next thing that obviously that I'm interested in is knowing, uh, what's actually in here. So, 
Um, it looks like they're showing, th like, what is that, nine different Batman stories on there? So let me see if there's, like, a blurb or any kind of information um, about what is going on in this, in this collection we have here. Because I like that stuff. So let's take a look. Uh, blah, I have to go up here. Okay. Batman number 200. Let's see. Number 200. It looks like they don't have it here. All right, fine. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they have it here. Hmm. Oh, look, Megami Magazine, issue number 200. Anime waifus. Sweet. Sweet. Oh, there it is. Okay. The Man Who Radiated Fear. Batman issue 200, which tells the story, The Man Who Radiated Fear. Um, says here in the blurb, Scarecrow invents a potion that causes his victims to literally panic in fear and uses it on the dynamic duo to make them helpless. After failing to capture Scarecrow and his gang of crooks due to their abject fear, Batman and Robin decide to hang up their capes for good. Clearly it was permanent. Uh, however, Alfred reminds them both of their parents' deaths and, and the vows they both took to fight crime. Now with renewed determination and vengeance, the Cape Crusaders hunt down Gotham's worst criminals one by one until they finally reach the Scarecrow. Ooh, that one looks like it would be a really good one to kind of learn about. Once again, they're showing a cover here that has a lot of damage to it. That's pretty funny. Very interesting. I like that. That's very, that might be one to pull aside. I'm going to pull that one aside because it's in pretty good condition. Oh man, I remember this one. Oh no, it's so badly messed up. It's so badly messed up. Oh, no! I mean, it looks... It, it's not the worst, but man, oh man. This thing has seen some rough times, for sure. All right, so we have here the Brave and the Bold Hawkman. Number 35... Uh, featuring the Wind Wonder in the High Flying Adventure Valley of the Vanishing Men. We've got all sorts of stuff going on in this one. All right. New superheroes, Night Dong versus Light Dong. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Bo, why? Why? Uh. <laughs> That's so good. Uh. Yeah, nine is mint, not even flipped. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I, I read that one. I'm sorry. What if they can't see it because it's dark? What draws them in? It should be light. Light dong to get the ladies. <laughs> like, <laughs> like dong? Should be like light dong? <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Oh my God. You guys are nuts. All right, hold on, hold on. Let me let me kind of let me find out what the hell is going on with this with this particular issue. So, um, the only thing that it, uh, okay, well let's let's talk about the condition because this thing is not looking too happy. One of the things that I noticed right away is the cover has essentially separated from the rest of the comic book. So, when I what I first noticed was that the comic book itself was lower than the cover page which means that they have separated in inside the sleeve or whatever. Um, let's see, what else can I see here? So, okay, there's tape. There's tape on the, on the, on the, uh, the binding. So it looks like it's scotch tape. Let me take a look here. Yeah, that is definitely scotch tape. And it's like ancient scotch tape too, because it's all yellow. Um, so... If you guys can see uh, some discoloration right here. Here, let me kind of put it in better view of the camera. You see that discoloration? That's yellowed scotch tape on the on the binding. <laughs> so somebody realized that the binding was falling apart, so they taped it up with scotch tape. Um, there's more scotch tape over here, on right there. And uh, there's crease marks all over the place. Creases, 
Um, there's a big gnarly crease right there. Big! Look! Oh my God! Look at that one. That's huge. That is such a big. Look at that. Oh my God! Can you guys see the line there? Look at that. You see that line? That thin line? It goes all the way from up here down all the way over here. That is a huge crease. Oh my God. Um, the top part looks all right. Is that taped? No, that's not taped. Okay. Yeah, the top part looks great. Um, but yeah, scotch tape, scotch tape, frayed bottom, uh, dog-eared corner right there, and then just a big old crease right along there, which is crazy. All right. <laughs> Let me go ahead and uh, look this puppy up, because if I remember correctly, I at one point looked this up in the past and found it to be, like, the most valuable of them, but... I don't think so. Not anymore, anyways. Uh, number 35. Let me see if that's going to get me what I'm looking for. They might require me to look up Brave and Bold. Yeah, they don't have it there. Okay, so maybe it's... Let's see. The Brave and Bold. Oh, and the Bold. I'm sorry. The... And the bold number 35. Uh, there it is. There it is in all of its glory. Okay. Well. Oh, yeah. It's just, you know, a perfect condition one is only just $25,000. You know, it's... Pfft, chump change. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> uh, yeah... Yeah. Oh, look! A point five goes for $20! Good to know! Good to know. Uh, wow. Um, yeah, even the lower condition ones seem to do all right. That's kind of cool, I guess. I mean, let's see. Let's see. Here's the most expensive one, so, which is selling for like $300. let us take a look. This is an 8.0 going for 300 Oh my god, it like, you can see that there's like fraying on the side, but it's like nothing. It's like nothing. Oh my god, you guys. It blows my mind that these people keep these comic books in such amazing condition. Like, wow. Oh, where did I get these? You want to know, Clay? Um, so these are given to me by my father. Um, I basically... Um, like, he just gave them to me over time. Like, he was just like, you know, like, he collected comic books all his life. And, uh, he didn't, he just wanted to pass them down to me, which he did. Um, but yeah, these were all given to me by my father, and I've kind of just held on to them over the years. So, um, and this is nothing. Like, I know we got to the bottom of the pile, guys. This is nothing. Like, I, I feel like Clayton came in here late, so he doesn't really have a reference point. But uh, let me kind of show you what's going on here, Clay. So this is the box that I'm, I'm working with. I don't know. Let me make sure you guys can see it. Uh, here's the box. So whoop, this little section right here is uh, what we went through in today's stream. Right here. And uh, there's more. There's much, much more, as you guys can see. There's a lot more comic books I got to make my way through. And um, this is box one of about between 12 or 15 boxes of comic books. So, yeah. Um, this is a thing I'm doing now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay, so... Maybe how much time? Oh, 5.57. Well, I actually have to go, so it looks like we finished this just in time. Um, so, out of all these really nice comic books, it looks like we found two that are in pretty all right condition. Um, so we have this 200th issue, which seems to be pretty nice. And hold on, let me let me kind of get out of this guy over here. There we go. Let's kind of come back up to the top, I guess. So we have this um, 200th issue, which is in pretty all right condition, I guess. Um, looks fine, other than, like I said, the binding. Um, the binding is the only part that doesn't look too awesome, but everything else about it looks really nice. Um, and then we have this one, 
which I think is basically the single best condition comic book that we've found in this collection so far. Um, and if it is in really good condition, it could be worth more than a thousand dollars from what I saw. So, um, there's literally, there's pretty much no damage to this thing at all. Um, I checked both the, shut up phone. Um, I checked both the front side and I checked the back side. So this guy right here is probably the best hope I have for an insanely expensive comic book in my collection. Um, I love this, by the way. Uh, it was uh, on sale for $1.25. So there you go. Once upon a time, <laughs> you could buy this for $1.25. Um, but clearly that's not the case anymore. Send out the good ones to the CGC. I mean, I don't know how to go about that though. Like, um, and I'm like really nervous about, you know, sending valuable comic books out in the mail. Like I've never, I've never had anything graded you guys. That's never been something that I've ever done before. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. Um, I'm very like, I'd, I'd be nervous about it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if it would get lost in the mail or, you know, like what the implication to sending something like that in the mail would do. I mean, you know what? If I'm going to be honest, I would maybe feel okay if I just sent out the one and saw what happened. Um, just out of curiosity, I guess. I don't know. But then again, like if anything happens to it, like it's just gone like that that could be potentially like a lot of money that's gone or even just a really nice collectible that you know i've held on to because my father gave it to me you know so uh let's see here let's see clayton's telling me i should definitely send it out uh dlg thank you for being here buddy i didn't even know you were hanging out with us that's pretty cool glad to have you in here uh, Clayton says use their website. So a pretty good variety, uh, in the collection, some good hits as well as a few on the lower end. Yeah. Yeah. We got to see a lot. And I mean, that's not even all of them. I mean, maybe at some point, um, I'll go through more, I guess. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll try to make the goal to do another stream like this, where we just kind of go through the box and see what we have. Cause clearly like I'm, I'm surprised that it took us two hours to go through that one pile, but I mean, I don't know. That's kind of cool. I like it. Um, yeah, you know, Clay, um, I, I don't know if you're in my discord. I feel like you are, I'm not sure, but you should totally like tell me like what website to use or, or something like that. Um, I've never been to like, I've been to a comic book collection, but I've never been to one for the purpose of like trying to grade comic books or something like that. So, um, I just don't know anything about it. Like I'm also a person who has like, you know, Magic cards that are not, I mean, well, Pokemon cards that are clearly valuable and not graded. And, like, you know, magic cards that are clearly valuable that are also not graded. Um, so, I mean, I just, I've never done anything like that, and I don't know how to go about it. Like, that's the thing, you guys. Like, um, I, like, some people wonder why I have so many insane, um, like such a diverse range of collectibles. And the thing is, is that like, guys, I've been doing this since like I was a child, you know, I've been collecting things like this since I was a child, like collecting comic books, collecting cards, collecting video games, collecting, you know, boxes, collecting all sort like fig action figures and things like that. And I mean, that's a hobby that I picked up from my dad, who, as you can see, he collected comic books. So you know, we're just kind of like, um, you know, I was saying in the stream yesterday, you know, I am my father's son. Like, we're hardcore obsessive collectors, and, and that's why I've been so lucky to kind of have all of the, you know, valuable collectibles of different kinds that I have. Um, it's just because I've literally been doing it my whole life. You know, it's not like, I know that, you know, it's kind of like I was making making jokes in the beginning of the stream before, where I was saying like, oh, like, People are collecting Digimon cards and, and, you know, Pokemon cards and, like, trying to find value and money. And it's like, you know, it's like a fad. It's like a fad to collect things for the purpose of, like, making money. And, like, you know, me and my father, like, we've been collectors, like, of, you know, different kinds of collectibles all of our lives, pretty much. 
and it's just because it was something we've enjoyed and and you know we enjoyed doing it together and we enjoyed it in our own individual way and it was never really about making money and like that's why we're lucky enough to have these insane you know piles of valuable collectibles that we have to this day and age that people you know drool over now so but anyways yeah i'll uh i'll go ahead and try to look into maybe getting something graded i guess and maybe it'll be the first time i've ever done something like that it might be kind of cool um yeah uh clayton you should hit me up on discord let me know um I'll, I'll look it up. I, I guess you're just abbreviating it as CGC. So I'll, I'll try and look that up on, um, on Google or something, unless you have like a specific website you want me to look into. Just let me know, homie. Um, hey, beta demonic tutor. That's pretty cool. DLG. Um, anyways, guys, I'm, I'm over my time limit. I, I gotta get going. So thank you guys all so much for hanging out with me. Um, we did find some cool stuff that maybe I will look into actually getting graded. Um, I do plan to maybe do more streams like this where we'll kind of like flip through comic books, listen to relaxing music, and um, maybe find some cool comic books that are maybe worth something, who knows. Um, I also have a plan to do like videos where I just kind of talk about comic books, like certain kinds of comic books. Like, kind of like how I was, you know, I went online today and did blurb, like, read blurbs about what is in the comic books just out of curiosity and fun. Um, and I kind of want to do a video series um, where I kind of do that, where, like, I'll find, like, a specific comic book that is interesting and maybe has, like, some interesting lore or something like that. And just kind of do like a little maybe 10 or 15 minute video essay talking about what's going on in the comic book. I thought that'd be kind of fun. Um, so, you know, doing these streams is helping me find the comic books that I want to do that for. And then eventually I will try to actually make videos about it and, and find it. So and, and produce those and edit them and whatever. So definitely look forward to that. Um, like I said, I'm kind of falling behind on content and I need to catch up overall. So we'll definitely see what happens in the future when I get to it. That's kind of the rule and way things go, don't they? But anyways, I'm going to say all the wonderful things that I always say at the end of all my streams and my videos, which is, guys, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and hit that like button. Um, you know, smashing that like button is super duper helpful and I greatly appreciate it. Um, if you're interested in more content, especially like this, which is kind of different than what I normally do... Um, go ahead and hit subscribe because I'm probably going to do more things like this. Uh, hit that notification bell as well so you guys can be updated on when I'm going to go live to do things like this or, you know, other kinds of material that I make, which could be pretty interesting and fun to do overall. So hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. It's super helpful. Um, go ahead and leave a comment below if you enjoyed this or if you're interested in any of the comic books or anything like that or, you know, something relating to comics, let me know. I greatly appreciate that. And go ahead and check in the description below for all of my wonderful links, uh, Streamlabs, PayPal. I also have a wonderful Discord with wonderful Discord members named Ya Boy Lettuce, Bo Falcon, uh, Mr. Fajuk Enterprises, James P., Mr. Ashed, and Miss Rebecca. I appreciate all of my wonderful Patreons because they help me out. They give me money on a regular basis, which allows me to kind of keep doing all the things that I do on this channel, as well as, you know, fund the channel. So I greatly appreciate my Patreon members, and that's probably one of the best ways to support me if you really want to do that. So thank you so much, guys. And the last thing I'm going to say, guys, is follow your dreams, okay? All right, I'll see you guys later. Take it easy, okay? Be safe out there. Watching you. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.